Hello everyone, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. It's episode 98 of our knitting and crochet podcast and you're watching this on June 10th or after. So it's a beautiful spring day today, just absolutely lovely. And in this episode, we're going to do all of the regular stuff. We'll give you a, a little update about what's happening on the farm. And we have lots of whips this time, no FOs, finished objects. So we're just gonna talk about works in progress. And we have uh, five, a five project list again. This time we're gonna talk about market bags, which are popular right now. And we um, have more information from Betsy and I on our wallflowers projects. And we have a harmony moment and a shop update as we always do. So um, I am recording this podcast in our yarn shop, which is uh, in our woolen mill on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. And like I said, it's a beautiful, beautiful day today. And it's the first really day, kind of summery day that we've had. We had a frost warning last night with frost, but today it's a very pleasant, about 20, I don't know, 23 degrees with just the slightest little whisper of a breeze and just gorgeous on the farm. Before we get started on that, uh, all the details about what's happening on the farm, I want to remind everybody that I do do chapters. So if there's a part of the podcast that you're not interested in or you want to watch later or you want to skip to something that you really want to hear about right away, then you can um, see the chapters in the show notes or you can just use your mouse or um, your cursor on your iPad to see where the different chapters are in the titles. Also, I'd like to remind everybody because I keep forgetting to do it at the end, so I'm gonna do it at the beginning, is that um, if you're enjoying the podcast, if you would su subscribe, that would be great. And if you like the podcast, then you can give it a thumbs up and also turn on your notifications. So if you turn on your notifications, you'll get a notification when I release a new podcast. So that really helps, helps me out and helps the channel grow. So I hope that you would consider subscribing. Thank you. And we'll talk about the farm. So we've been talking about uh, No Mo May which is now over, so we've mowed the lawn, and we do this so that the bees have something to eat. So we're trying to help them. But you might recall at this very same time last year, a bee got in my coveralls that I used to do my chores, and he stung me, or she, whatever, stung me right on the most tender part of your inner leg, and it turned into a huge big welt, and I was jumping around like there was a bee in my pants, because there was a bee in my pants. So guess what happened this week? No Mo May, we've been living with the dandelions everywhere. Our gardens are a mess. And uh, B got into my coveralls again, but this time up around my neck. So I have no idea where he or she came from, but I, was, I had already started doing the chores and I was in the barn and I heard this vibration and I didn't know where it came from. So I was like looking around, I thought my hearing was going or something. Next thing I know, I felt a pinch in my neck. So of course your first instinct is to go like this. And I went like that and then I got pinch, pinch, pinch. And then I heard that vibration again. And so I realized it was a bee and I turned my collar inside out and he fell on the barn floor, but bees don't survive when they sting you like that. So he, I guess he didn't get me good enough the first time. So he kept trying and I don't know, I had a welt on the back of my neck that was about this big. And I was like, no mo may, I'm doing what I can. And every year now I'm getting stung. Right. So, and now there's house flies because it, the weather is warm. So if you see something flying around, the last video, there was a fly that landed right on the lens of the camera of the, uh, of the iPad where we record. And uh, it was really funny because somebody, somebody said, oh, I saw a bird. It wasn't a bird, it was a fly. <laughs> it was a fly that flew right on the thing. We had to stop recording and get sorted out with the flies. And, but I didn't notice it when I was editing and it went, flew right towards it. And the, the, um, the viewer thought that they saw a bird flying in the, in the, uh, you know, that was just a close up of a fly. 
anyway back to the bees so i'm done with the bees <laughs> so i don't know now it's like i have to check my coveralls every day but i don't think he got in um in the coveralls before i left because sometimes they get in that uh, we have a like a our basement is still a dirt floor with sandstone foundation in our old house and sometimes they get in because they like to burrow in the in the um gr ground that's around the foundation and they can get into the mud room there but i don't think he got in there i think he actually might have flown in what went after i went outside anyway that's it you try to do what you can and that's the that's the thanks that you get so we've had um sun and intermittent rain now for the last couple of weeks so the grass is growing out of control and uh, now we're always in the last three years we've been complaining because we don't have enough grass this year now it's so high that ken doesn't know if he's going to be able to get the mower to go over it so we might have to get somebody to actually cut it i don't know what we're what we're going to do the sheep can't eat it fast enough so um and we've been a little bit undisciplined about giving them a small enough area so if you give sheep a small enough area they'll eat everything down and they'll trim it just like a lawnmower but if you give them too big of an area and they can't keep up with the grass growing then they just pick out the good stuff that they like so they're very selective and you can see that in some of the the uh, areas where they are there's patches that are eaten down to a good level and then there's patches that are not eaten at all and it's the, just the different kinds of vegetation that are there and i'll give another update on um, diva so now we're about five weeks into her special eating plan and so now she's learned that uh, or has decided that she doesn't want to eat alone so all of the sheep the all of the flock comes in with her when we call her to come and eat they all come so she's got company in the barn, but now she's decided that she wants either Ken or I standing there beside her while she eats. And we have to stir the, the mash that we give her every so often because the good stuff settles to the bottom and she puts up her up, puts her face up and then baws so that we'll stir it. So all the good stuff is always at the top. I don't know, anyway. <laughs> It's really something she's gained quite a lot of weight so she's looking pretty good she's really old so she's not going to be not going to look fit as a fiddle like she's got uh you know her legs are a little bit crooked i don't know she's got arthritis or whatever and she's got a few bulges from having too many babies and things so she's um she's not doesn't she's not a show sheep let's put it that way but she is looking uh, pretty good. She's got a good spring in her step. So I think we're, we're well and truly over any danger that's going to happen. She's just 20 years old. So we'll, she's, uh, she's eaten well for her last, uh, her last uh, however long she's, how she's going to be with us. But she uh, she's definitely can't complain about the food. That's for sure. So I think that's about it. There's not, it's really very calm and peaceful, which is great. The horses are doing great. The rabbits are doing great. Everybody is, uh, everybody is fine. And uh, we've had no uh, animals trying to break into the rabbit hutch or anything. So everything is, uh, is good, except for the bee stings. Anyway, luckily I'm not allergic. So I'm gonna go right to works in, project, or works in progress. So I be, I've brought all of my projects because I, even though I haven't really been working a lot on um, some of them, the wallflowers thing is a little bit addictive, I have to say. So I've been crocheting a lot on the blanket, but I did manage to eke out a little bit of progress on every project. So the first one I'm gonna show is the um, cowl cardigan. And if you're new here, this is a cardigan that I'm doing uh, knit in Rowan Kid Silk, or sorry, Kid Classic. And I finished the back. So that's, I showed that two episodes ago. So I finished that. And now I'm doing the left side and the front side of the cardigan. And you can see I've just barely cast on. I've knit, there's just a four row rib on this pattern. So it's not a, it's not a big, uh, big rib and um, I've just started the double moss, moss stitch, stitch. So I'm just going to give you a little hint if you're doing um, two at a time things on in the flat. 
so it's the left side and the, the right side of the cardigan and the split is right here and it's surprisingly easy to get turned around and do an extra row on one side so if you stop in the middle of your your knitting it's easy to not exactly understand where you are when you pick it up again and it's happened to me a few times where i'll start knitting on a side that i had just finished knitting a row and I'll, I'll go back so then you end up with one side longer than the other you you can see it it's the because it ends up being two rows longer so you definitely can see it but then it takes you a little bit of time to get it organized again and you have to catch up on the other side so this little trick was um, shared with um, Karen who used to come to knit night and um, if you're going to do two sides of something on the same needle two at a time then I use a little opening stitch marker to attach the two sides together so that I it makes it like one piece just don't forget to change your yarn to the other ball <laughs> when you get there but it just uh, makes it more it's easier to keep track of where you are when it's joined like that so that's what I'm doing so it's really really just the beginnings of the left and right sides and it's just going to be the same fabric all the way up double moss stitch for I don't think it's 58 centimeters or something like that so that's that the yarn is kid classic in cherry red and I can't say it enough I'm a big fan of the kid classic uh, yarn by Rowan it's just really lovely to knit with and it feels the fabric is just beautiful as well so that's the cowl cardigan still working on it and I'm going to show the tungsten so the tungsten the last time I showed it I was uh, the stripes uh, or the lines of the argyle weren't finished so this is the front and I'm doing duplicate stitch on the argyle lines because uh, they want you to do in the pattern in Tarja. I did that for the back. It's not fun, I have to say. So now I'm doing the uh, duplicate stitch. I will have to go back on the back one and do duplicate stitch over the intarsia lines that I did because they're, they're noticeably finer when you knit it right in instead of uh, knit it, doing the duplicate stitch over top of your knitting. So in order to get them to match, I'm going to have to go back. But you can see there, I just have um, this little stripe down here comes up even with this long one here. So I have that duplicate. So that'll come out about, about here. And then after that, it's just straight stockinette again, all the way up. I think it's also about 57 centimeters because it's a little bit, uh, it's kind of like a tunic length. So I'm just, it's completely mindless at this point. So just knitting stockinette and the sleeves are just plain stockinette, stockinette except for the ribbing on the bottom, which is the same as this. So this goes pretty fast when I work on it. I just haven't been working. It's a little bit boring, just a little bit now, but I do want to get it finished because it's a really nice sweater and the felted tweed just feels uh, lovely. And, uh, uh, just straight knitting it's an easy it's a quite an easy pattern uh, the intarsia if you if you feel comfortable doing intarsia there's really not much uh, much to it and the duplicate stitch helps a lot so that's tungsten and I brought paisley so don't get too excited I didn't do that much but I did do so I, I kind of forced myself to do uh, do some work on it because I wanted to do the wallflowers which you'll see later what happened or what, how they are coming. So it, the last time I showed this, I had sewed on the top two buttons and I wasn't happy with the color of thread. I had a beige uh, color thread on the top button, but I went to the store and I purchased a lavender color thread. So I removed the top button and re-sewed it with the lavender and i've got most of the buttons on i have three left to do at the bottom and i finished doing um, all of the outline on the full paisleys on the right hand side except for this half one at the very top so i didn't do that one yet and i also um, started on 
the left hand side I still have duplicate stitch to do here and then of course it's all the sequence and stuff so I didn't do any more of that sewing but um, I did make sure that I pulled this out and did a bit of work on it so people have now some viewers have started coming to the island for their holidays or people that are here for their holidays our viewers on the podcast and they have I have a lot of sweaters that I've made up in the shop and there's they're saying well, where's the pace like, well, it's not finished yet so it's still not out here but um, I will keep working uh, I'll be keeping working on that so that's the paisley so um, the most of my work time crafting time has gone into the wallflowers which you're going to see in the segment that I do with uh, Betsy so Jennifer Hicks has uh, started a new project as well so she's really generous to let me show her projects and so <laughs> kind of seems like I'm well it doesn't seem like I'm doing them but it does keep things a little bit more interesting so Jennifer has decided to do another rocket tee so the way that you work the rocket tee is that you start off the um, the collar because it's a v-neck so you knit in the flat in the flat uh, knit flat for the first little while until you're ready to join the v so she's just about ready to join it's top down so she's just about ready to join the v it's just so this will be like the shoulders you can see like this but this is really interesting because she is using uh, point prim sock yarn in slate. I hope the color comes, comes up because it's really lovely, this uh, combination that she did. And she decided to use, you would normally just use a kid silk haze for the, the, the kid silk haze stripe, but she's using the kid silk haze color. And kid silk haze color, is it comes in a double ball so it's a double size ball of uh, the um, kid silk the regular kid silk haze and it's got like the slightest little variegation like tone on tone variegated and i don't know if it's going to come out if you can really see it but um, there just goes a little bit lighter and darker it gives this very very soft effect and in the fabric it's really lovely it's not you wouldn't see it from a distance really but it just gives this really nice uh, dimension so obviously this is not blocked because it's not done but so it's a little bit bumpy but I'm hoping you can see that just a little bit lighter and darker shading it kind of kind of reminds me of um, it's like gentle like gentle coloring like you would see in the sky if you know what I mean like just kind of very soft shade shading it's really lovely and it's all you know me I like these little kind of details that bring some interest to the knitting so um, that's uh, that's what Jennifer Hicks is um, working on okay so that's uh, that's all the knitting that's been done so everybody's busy doing things and you're gonna see uh, in the segment with Betsy as well she's gonna talk about her sweater that she finished so we're all uh, we're all busy busy knitting <laughs> so we're gonna go to the shop update now and I think the shop update is mostly about books this time because there's a lot of books I've restocked a lot um, I said the last time or told you the last time that I had restocked all of Kate Davies book books so the other designer that I carry every book that she makes and produces is Marie Wallen so I have all of her books that she has published and I have uh, just ordered the new C Cumbria as well and it's on its way so I'm going to put it up as a pre-sell but she shipped it out uh, today by UPS so I'll have it in a couple days so it's not really really a pre-sell but uh, if you order something else with it we're going to wait uh, we'll wait till the book comes and we'll ship it all together so it might be a couple days um, later shipping than normal but I wanted to talk about some of the other books that she uh, I have all of them like I said all of them are in stock and um, there are a couple really um, popular ones and there's one or two that are not as well known as some of the other books so I just wanted to show you some 
that we have. So we have springtime. And I know quite a few of our viewers also watch Fruity Knitting. So you, um, Andrea just did an interview with Marie Wallen uh, last Friday or two Fridays ago. Was it last Friday or two Fridays ago? Anyway, it was uh, a few within the last two weeks. And they talked about, uh, um, Andrea did a fashion show of her Marie Wallen knits because she's knit quite a few uh, things and she's done a couple things from the springtime book, including Amaryllis, which is the front, uh, the cover page. So we have this in stock. You can order it online. Um, another book that's not quite as well known, or at least to me it wasn't, is Once Upon a Time Knits. And it's for children. So there's patterns in here. There's 16 patterns and it's, uh, they're sized for children from 2 to 10. So it's a really, really sweet book. So if you hadn't heard of that by Marie Wallen, it's a, it's a, a good one. There's a big selection of uh, patterns and of course they're all beautiful um, color work. You can see there and um, look at this uh, yoga. There's some cabling as well but look it's just sweet. So that's called Once Upon a Time. And that in stock. And she's also uh, done some crochet books. So I have Filigree, which is a summer one. And I also have Winter Crochet coming in. So that's coming at the same time as Cumbria. And Marie um, does some really spectacular things with knit and crochet. So she doesn't mind mixing it up so that you would have um, a pattern that had crochet on it, but then like this one, the sleeves are knit. So, and there's a couple in the winter crochet book that are done like that as well. Um, or here you have knitting with a crochet panel. And both those books are just gorgeous. So Filigree is the summer one, and then Winter Crochet is the winter one. And I don't have it here to show, but um, it is on its way. It's, it is on its way as well. And there's some really nice patterns in that. So that's Marie Wall. And, and of course, Cumbria is her new book that's coming out. So, uh, and that has patterns in it for men and women. So that's uh, interesting. And there's some really great, uh, great things there. And since we've been talking about crochet flowers all the time, I just want to remind folks that I do also have Jane Crowfoot's Bohemian Blooms. This is quite a different thing than the wallflowers that we're doing. It's a little bit more complicated and there's, um, uh, but there is, re it's really good step-by-step -step information on um, making this beautiful blanket. And the way that Jane uh, approaches this blanket is you start with, um, you learn the basic skills that you need and you build up to the most complex uh, flowers that you, that you do. So she has you do just plain stripes for the first little bit, which is the border, and you get used to that. And then um, the next thing that you do, the next component is a little bit more challenging, but you do learn step by step. So if you're interested in crocheting blankets, this is a great book and she uses uh, felt it tweed as well and other rowan yarns so um, you can uh, there's uh, uh, the whole list is on the on the beginning of the book if i if i remember to do it i'll put the list of yarns that she uses she uses um alpaca soft dk and the uh, felt it tweed and there's been a couple customers that have done this project and some of the colors are not available anymore but just shoot me a line if you want to do it and uh, I'll be able to do replacements for you because there are colors that are very similar to the ones that Jane uses that are no longer available but mostly everything is still available. So that's the Bohemian Blooms. I just wanted to let everybody know that I have restocked Nora Gons cable source book and if you like doing cables, this is the book for you. It's like a stitch dictionary for cables. 
um, and there are a couple patterns in it but you have all kinds of um, it's just most of the book like I can't really show them because they're all have the patterns there but um, it's the book is a stitch a stitch dictionary and I don't know I think there's uh, a hundred, more than 150 stitch patterns so there you go Noragon's cable knit it cable source book <laughs> so it's a it's a really good uh, a really good seller so I've just restocked that okay so now I, in the shop we should talk about some yarns so I'm just going to show let you know that because I'm going to talk about creative linen when I talk about the the uh, my top five list um, this time and I just wanted to let you know that I have expanded uh, the colors that I have in creative linen so if you check on the website I do have uh, I had started with really kind of the more neutral colors but now I've started to add some of the um, some of the brighter colors so they're not they're colorful but they're not they're not exactly bright because the linen has a natural beigey tone to it so when you dye over it you get these kind of muted colors so there's more they're more intense i guess so i've started getting those and if you really want a color in creative linen that i don't carry then just just write to me and i'll uh, i'm happy to bring it in um it's uh it's a particular thing linen to knit with and it softens as you wear it but some people um, uh, don't like it or they don't want to, they don't want to knit it but if you're knitting with linen this is a really really beautiful one and it really softens lovely once you once you wear it and it just gets better and better as it goes so I didn't bring in every single color I just wanted to see how how many people were interested in it but um, I have brought in actually both of these colors the red and the um, teal were oasis this is the actual name of that one I brought in because customers asked me to bring it so I'm happy to do it so if you if you want different colors in uh, creative linen then just let me know and um, then we're going to talk about uh, some of our own yarns so we have um, I have a new color and I have two other colors that were not previously available in worsted that are now we've made in worsted so the first color that I want to talk about is new and if you subscribe to the newsletter you already know about this so just for people that uh, don't know we do do a newsletter every Friday um, if you subscribe to the newsletter often in the newsletter I feature things that are new first to the newsletter subscribers so if you create an account on our website you have to check off that you allow marketing email and then you'll get the you'll get the newsletter if you already have an account and you're not getting the newsletter and you want it you can subscribe in the I think it's in the lower right hand corner of the home page there's a place to subscribe to the newsletter so you can subscribe there when you check the um, allows marketing emails the only marketing email that I send out is the newsletter and it goes once a week on Fridays at 2 30 and then I do not ma mail anything else so that that'll be all that you'll get that I'm not inundating you with uh, with um, letters and that kind of thing emails so the new color that we launched last week in the newsletter is sea spray and it's a very soft muted green and it's done exactly like a variegated because it does have variegation but it's tonal so it's not doing multiple colors it's the same color but just in different depths so a graduated well it's not exactly a gradient because they're not evenly spaced through it's done exactly like a variegated but the green so we expanded we didn't have a lot of greens so we expanded it when we did the green gradient and uh, we decided that we would just do these um, this little this soft muted green it's lovely and it does have little flecks of um, autumn birch in it so you have these little um, flecks of this beautiful gold shade in this as well and it goes perfectly with uh, pine forest 
It would also go with um, other colors that are, are based on pine forest, like lichen is another one, and clover. So that's that. So that's called sea spray. So that's in the shop. And we have uh, two popular colors. It was, I think it was like the first year that we were open, we did a, um, a little collection and it was named for all of the different times of day. So there was uh, dawning, first light, gloaming and twilight. So gloaming and twilight have been in uh, Worsted for quite a long time, Selkirk Worsted. But first light and dawning have not been uh, not been available in Worsted. So I'm going to um, show you. This is dawning. It's just beautiful with purples and kind of soft pinks and muted tones. Just you can just uh, it's very a gentle variegation, and this could you could use this. Uh, it goes with quartz. Uh, if you wanted a solid autumn birch, of course, or um, amethyst brooch, some of the most popular solids that we have. So that's dawning. And then first light is the sun is coming up. The colors are showing of the, <laughs> of the day. So you have, uh, you have this tones. So this is just, it's gorgeous, much brighter less muted but just beautiful it goes with a lot of different uh, different colors uh, that you can mix and match so these um, the four uh, colors that were in this sequence and I didn't bring them all with me but they were meant to go if you go from dawning to first light to gloaming to twilight they do create a gradient that you can use all four of those colors uh, together um, in the project and we did a um, sample of that in to the point it's a shawl that was made and the each section there's four sections with um, these colors in them and it's just broken up with a natural bar in between and it's just gorgeous so they all play together really really nicely so you can check those out and again this is uh, it's been available in Erin but this is the first time that we've had it uh, these two colors available in Selkirk Worsted. Okay so you can ch check that out on the in the shop online sorry just gonna get this and I think it's time to go uh, to the list so the list this week is market bags so right now market bags are definitely the hot thing they're everywhere and uh, why buy one when you can make something beautiful and have a gorgeous one so I picked out five of the ones that I like the best again with my my five for the week list i have chosen ones that are popular uh, some by well-known designers and some that by designers i had never heard of and i also um, look to see the comments the project comments that people have made to make sure that they they've been well tested and people are enjoying the, the patterns so I have five and then I couldn't resist. I put one more in. So it, the top five list actually has six things in it this time. There's a bonus one. And of course, with market bags, it's the perfect kind of project to mix it up with knit and crochet. And as I always do, I'll give you some suggestions for yarns as well and tell you a little bit about it. So the one um, first one that I want to talk about is the Mandano beach bag and that's uh, designed by Heidi Kermeyer and it is a free download on Ravelry so you can go check that out it's a striped nautical bag so I <laughs> of course I like it because it's got stripes on it I wear stripes a lot I love them so it takes two colors and you need 275 yards of each color to make this bag and it's knitted. Um, there is a um, piece that's flat on the bottom and then you work in the round in the stripes. So, and if you want your jogless stripes, then you can check out my uh, tutorial on helical knitting. 
because that will show you how to get your stripes so that you don't have that little jog that you often get with stripes. So the Mendano beach bag is my favorite of all the ones that I, that I looked at. So you can, you can check that, that one out. The second one, the second bag is the Sakura market bag. And this is uh, designed, it's a crochet bag and it's designed by KM, K-A-M-E crochet. So she's got a period between each of the letters with a capital letter. So I'm thinking, I don't think you pronounce it Kami, or I think you just say the letters K-A-M-E crochet. And it's a pretty simple bag, but, um, and it's done on a four millimeter hook, hook and it takes two skeins of yarn. And I'm just saying two skeins of yarn. It's about, all of these bags take between 250 or 270 and about 360 skeins. So um, you'll just have to, it's no big deal because if you, um, you use a finer yarn or a thicker yarn, your bag is bigger or smaller. So it's kind of, they're easy projects to, to um, just do with, with what you have or if you wanna buy a yarn that you love. And I would suggest though for all of these bags that I'm gonna sh talk about and show that you should use a cotton or a um, linen. They make the best, uh, the best durable bags that uh, you can. Wool is not, really I don't it doesn't really suit it like you have to you're gonna have to wash them and stuff like that so you, you can certainly wash wool but they all it wool has a lot more elasticity and stretch so I wouldn't recommend it for any of these bags so but the uh, Sakura market bag is um, beautiful and you can you can do it with uh, two skeins it's pretty simple it's not really considered a beginner because of one stitch that she uses and they're the front post crochet stitches. Now I've done front pro post on a hat as one of my very first things that I crocheted when I started knitting again as well. So it's not that difficult and you can certainly find lots of tutorials about how to do, do them and it gives a nice um, uh, kind of a, it's a beautiful stitch when you do front, fr you do front post and uh, left front post and right front post but there's lots of resources to be able to do it if you love this bag so it's a it's a really cute one the third one is um, also a crochet bag and it's the color block market bag and it is designed by Jen Palmer and you do it on a five millimeter hook it takes about 360 yards and you could use hand knit cotton so the Rowan head knit cotton is the thickest cotton yarn that Rowan makes and uh, so this is uh, this is a little bit uh, bulkier and it just it's really nice it's simple just with that color block on the bottom and then the uh, the plain top it's uh, it's a really uh, nice bag I also looked for bags that looked like they would actually hold things because <laughs> a lot of them are have quite big mesh and um, unless you're buying like fruit and things like that you don't want stuff to fall through them they look great but if the mesh is too big um, I wouldn't really use it myself so this is why I chose some of these uh, designs the next one is really cool it's called the Tolt fold it bag this is a knit bag and it's uh, designed by Veronica Hobie or Joby I'm not sure if you pronounce the uh, J as an H or as a real J so it's Veronica Hobie I'm going with Hobie J-O-B-E and uh, all of these all of these um, uh, bags are on Ravelry and some of them direct you to another website to purchase the bag or get more or they're downloaded because there a lot of them are free as well and the told fold it, fold it bag you get a link to the website where that that uh, pattern is hosted you can knit it in there's two different styles you can knit it in garter stitch or stock and stitch stock and net stitch and um, she used like a super thick yarn for the garter one and it was crocheted on a 10 millimeter hook so that would be really fast 
I don't have a yarn that you would make that is thick enough for that, but you could hold the creative linen double or the hand knit cotton double and you'd get a good approximation of the thick yarn that she did. But there's also a stockinette version and in the stockinette she uses an eight millimeter needle, so still quite a, quite a large size and you use uh, when if you're using a really bulky yarn you would use about 300 yards if it's slightly lighter you would use a little bit uh, more yardage to get the same size bag but i just love the way that it looks it's like or origami and um, she gives you directions that you can um, the the you can knit a little bit more to get an extension you can knit an ex extension on the um, strap part but if you want it quite close under your arm you can just fold the two um, two corners of the rectangle you're basically knitting a rectangle and making the bag out of the rectangle and you fold and sew and you fold two corners together to make the strap but it will come quite cl close under your arm so if you want uh, most of the pictures that uh, I've, I'll show here is, it has an extension that she tell, also tells you how to knit, knit it. So you can knit that extension for the strap. And that's a knit one. So the Wild Rose Market Bag is the next one. And that is designed by Stephanie Jessica Lau. And it's a crochet bag. And um, it would be perfect in creative linen. It's granny squares with a twist. So the way that they're put together, the squares are fairly straightforward, but the way that they're put together gives that interest to the bay. And um, you need about 610 yards of the yarn. Cre creative linen kind of fits the specs of the uh, one that she's recommending in the pattern. And uh, so 610 yards, it's roughly three, uh, three skeins of uh, creative linen for that one. And I really liked it because it's quite solid. So even though there's a little bit lacy bits because of the way that the granny squares are made, it's a good solid bag with not, not a lot of um, spaces for stuff to fall through. So I just thought that was really cute. So that's five. And then the bonus one is the, um, I don't know if she would call it the Atex or if she would just say ATX uh, bag. And it's by Stacy Perry, who's famous on YouTube, obviously, for uh, very pink knits. And I like this. This is a much longer slouchy bag. You can see how long it hits, goes down to around your hip. But it is um, a color work, two color bag and um, it would be perfect in creative linen as well and the it takes about 540 yards so again three skeins and um, you can do you do a stripe with that that bag so i really like that one as well so that's the top five plus one list for market bags for this podcast and um, thank you for all of your comments about the list so i i guess i'm going to keep going because we had a lot of people say that they really liked it um and i know it's true when you get on ravelry and you're trying to find something it gets to be a bit overwhelming so i'm happy to do some of the homework on that i'm learning a lot too while i'm while i'm doing the research and uh, i hope that uh, you try a market bag and if you're a relatively new knit knitter, it's a great project. You don't have to worry about sizing because even if your gauge is off, whatever size you make is going to be the bag that you have and nobody's going to be the wiser that it's not uh, exactly to spec. So, uh, and there's a good selection of crochet and knit in there. So I hope you enjoy that. We're going to pop over to uh, the segment that Betsy and I recorded earlier on the wallflowers so there's no big surprise betsy has made is she's right on time with everything that she's doing i'm behind but i hope to catch up this week and uh, we'll just pop on over there betsy as always has her a project that she's going to show as well so there'll be a little bit of chit chat as an introduction and then we go into the wallflowers but the whole segment this time is about 20 minutes so it's not not like 45 like the last <laughs> last episode was when I divided it into two. So I hope you'll join us to see what's happening with our crocheted blankets. Hi Betsy. Hi Kim. <laughs> How are you this week? Good. Good? Yes. Yes. You had a good week? 
I did. Well, two weeks for these Yeah, folks. that's true. Two yeah. weeks. I survived what we are now officially calling Junuary. Right. A term that Kim used a couple, well, several podcasts back now. Right. Um, for anyone who's been following all along, you might have heard her use that term. And I thought it was a local, commonly known term, so I've been throwing it around all over the place, but I'm not so sure it is. I think it's a, we're going to call it a Kimism. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, so you're, you're spreading it around, though. I'm spreading it around. We're getting it With going. confidence. With, uh, yeah, that's the only and way. And when you say it, is there anybody that doesn't know what you're talking about? From well, they, here? They know what I'm referring to immediately. Yeah, and they, they absolutely kind of like, do know. Oh, so yes, yes it yes. makes sense. So January meaning... They're wishing they thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> January meaning it's June, but it's it's cold. As cold like, as January. Yeah, well, <laughs> not quite. January on the island is something else. Yeah. Uh, but frost, we've been having frost. Yes, so. we had a frost last night. Yeah. So today we're up to temperatures that are lovely, but maybe not wool friendly. Yes. Um, but I decided... I'm going to tough it out. Right. And, uh, and if you notice uh, that our hair is blowing in the wind like we've got fans on ourselves, it's actually because we've got every window in the shop mm -hmm. open so that Betsy doesn't melt. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe your hair is blowing in the wind. Mine is hairsprayed down like oh, it's 1962. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds oh. me of a funny story that Ken likes to tell. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well. So, you know, I was doing the clubs and the bars in the 80s. And oh, okay. if you recall what the hair was like in the 80s, <laughs> hairspray was a must. In yes. fact, you always carried a big bag, big enough to put your can of hairspray in, in your it. bag. Oh, so okay. that if, if the least little bit of it dropped, then you'd be able to back home and fix, her all her, up. fix it all up. So Ken was, uh, I guess we were meeting each other downtown in Halifax, and this little car pulled up, and there was it was like packed with young girls. Yep. And he said he just watched them because they were all in the in the car, and they were like scrunching their hair, and they were spraying it, and whatever. And when the door, all four doors opened at once, and oh, they got the out, we're all like, <coughs> <coughs> like that by the fumes. <laughs> And he said oh. there was actually puffs of hairspray coming, coming out of there. there. Yes. Oh. So, anyway, well, it's not like that anymore. But. Small confession time. Uh -oh. Maybe in the 80s, Kim was hairspraying her hair. I was learning how to walk. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But we'll move you forward. Get a girl where it hurts. Okay. Maybe oh. maybe the next advice on your sweater might be a little bit of. Something not, else, <laughs> not, not as freely given. Uh, no. Anyway, I'm, I'm being a tease. Yes, but, yes, um, yes. That's so what no one is have, confusing oh. that we're the same age anyway. Um, so anyway, what have we been up to? Well, you have to talk about your sweater. My sweater, right. Yes. Good point. So I had knit it top down, reached the bottom. Mm -hmm. I was like an inch and a half away. It was time to do the ribbing and I had no more pink yarn. Right. And I'd already ordered additional yarn, so I was determined not to have to try and track down some more. Okay. So Kim suggested, I have a cream color here, suggested doing, um, I wanted a split hem and I didn't want it to roll. Right. So doing the seed stitch, which is the purl one, knit one, and then the next row knit one purl one. Right. Um, and it came out very well. I won't bother trying to hold up my sweater on the bottom, but this is the pattern here. And it's right across the bottom. Looks like a little with, checkerboard. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah, with a little tiny, about an inch split yes. up the side. Yeah. Um, I yeah. just have a question. Sure. So the the um, oh, vertical. I that too. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. I didn't really notice so, that before. So the seed stitch is the straight down the cuff. And then I went back and did the overlay crochet. Oh, okay. Um, to They're hide the, where it joins. Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect. Uh, Sitzel Huyevik gave me that idea because yeah. she uses that frequently yes, on yes. her patterns. So yeah. it just gave it, yeah, a really nice clean nice. finish between the two, the joins yeah. there. Because I could actually see where I had changed the pink yarn mm -hmm. to the cream yarn mm -hmm. and it was kind of bothering me. So, yeah. so that's no, perfect. That. So I love it so much. And true to me, one of these days I will get a sweater right. But <laughs> as you can all see, it is still touching my neck. Yeah. Um, I really should learn to just start with a scoop neck pattern, right. but I have not. But this is a based on, loosely based on the flax. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just so, on, on their top down measurements with the raglan yes. going on. Yes. And the flax, I think, comes quite high, high. but not okay. quite as high as well, yours. I think and, 
just the way I'm built, I'm discovering that I think what would normally sit kind of just nicely across those, whatever those two notch, bones are it's called. called uh, it's called the <laughs> something notch. Whatever. Yeah, I learned so. that from the English piece movie. He oh, talks about that. talks about I forget what it's called. I'll have to put it under, underneath because there's a special... <laughs> A term for it. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. So instead of mine sitting there, it always seems to me to start to creep up my neck. So right. it just must be the way I'm built. Because I did add short rows in the back to mm -hmm. raise the back, mm -hmm. and that also didn't solve it. Um, I even added short rows in the back at the bottom right. to drop the back just a little oh, bit okay. lower. Yes, just to make sure we're too. getting over my little rump back there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so regardless of all of that, it's still sitting too high. So last night at 8 p.m., I <laughs> greatly resisted the urge to pull out the sewing machine, zip a little line across, and cut it out. And that is what I'm going to do. Tonight, no doubt. <laughs> Maybe not tonight, yeah. but <laughs> before I can actually wear this sweater consistently, yeah. I need yeah. to. Because you're always going to be pulling at exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. always trying to tuck yeah. it down. And then my plan is to finish it with a very similar trim that we've got here. I don't know right. if I'll make it as wide or maybe narrow. Right. So are you um, going to do the beige or are you going to yeah. do the... No, I'm going to, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, so okay. Oh, we'll nice. see how it turns out. Okay. But, yes, it'll yeah. be nice. So now you're just going to go knit, you're going to knit scoopy necks. I need that. to. I really need to find, at least try a pattern that is yeah. how you do a scoop neck. Yeah, I think we uh, were talking about this before yep. um the kate davies pattern has That's a raglan right. top yes. down the uh, even dune it's a raglan yep. top down with a, a scoopy neck mm -hmm. it's not really a scoop neck it's just a lower crew neck yeah lower crew and that's what that's i'm what looking you for to start because right. um, yeah. i still want to do the raglan yeah. idea and then i think because the raglan works for my shoulders yes. i have nice footballer shoulders <laughs> so it's yeah. probably it's probably because there's different types of shoulders like there's sloping yeah. and slightly sloping and then there's squared square ones yes. and i know um ken has square ones as well so oh, it's okay. flat like from the out from the neck uh, instead cross. of slope okay. and every time when you, we used to buy suits or he used to buy suits and wear them he always had to get the back of the neck fixed because he so had they, an extra yes it oh, would always okay. be a wrinkle in the back yep. so the tailor always had to cut out like where you would do short rows on a right. woman's sweater he had to take that out. He basically had to have the short rows removed. Yes, yeah, because okay. uh, his shoulders would bunch up the up okay. the back. Yeah. So just the way the tailoring well, worked. Well, like when they cut pieces for the for shoulders for a jacket, they're not actually cut straight. Yeah. They're cut on an angle. I yes. do know that from yeah. a little bit of sewing. So right. anyway, I love the whole process of figuring out what works for me. I'm looked into. Is it Amy Hurt? Herzog. Uh, Herzog's book, yeah. which um, Kim has borrowed or lent to me for now. So I'm yeah. looking through and getting some ideas of, because um, she talks about having a basic that you start with and then how to change and adjust your pattern right. from there. Right. So, it's kind of like a recipe, like yes. I said. So yes. next time okay. I will just start with that approach. Yes. It's just, it's time. Yeah. So that's my knitting. I am working on the Fox Sake by Maxim Sear. Mm -hmm. um, it's going slow. Many of you had some fantastic suggestions about using some sort of apparatus, I think, that you wear on your fingers and feeds through to help when oh. you're using three-stranded, three-stranded color. color work. Right. <laughs> um, but I have instead just decided to sit in one spot and I put <laughs> one yarn out in front, one to the right, one to the left. And, and it's I seem working. to be coping. Yes. And because it's just a yoke, it feels like it's it's doable. Oh, so good. I'll show you when we actually have something oh, to show. Good. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you've made some big progress on your wallflowers because <laughs> if you're in, in the lessons of wallflowers, which is the crochet flowered blanket that both Betsy and I are doing. Yeah and uh, by sue matten yes. and the uh it was a big a big week a big two weeks we 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 were expected to accomplish a lot yes. or, or not expected to i shouldn't say that no. at all we were given content to complete a lot yes um you can still do it at your own pace right which i think we'll which see, you'll see. <laughs> which you'll see there's there's sticking to the schedule and then there's doing it at your own and, pace and there's me i'm just i'm a time-oriented person and for you folks i'm really wanting to finish this within the six month time period that the course happens so mm -hmm. you can watch it fully right uh, develop and i am not running my own business so <laughs> that's that's my excuse i'm offering to you yes yeah, so oh thank you i'm i'm gonna really take that excuse yes so um although i think that this week now that we've gotten through the last two weeks have been pretty pretty intense, high intense yeah. 
intensity, but next week is um, Sue offers Zoom meetings in, in intermittently through the course. And when there's a Zoom meeting, you're just catching up basically. Yes. Yeah. So the Zoom meetings are next week. Okay. So, so that means there's no new lesson nice. for next week. So okay. I should be able to catch up. Okay. So hopefully. We'll go for it. Yeah. So we left so, you with popcorns. Yeah. Do you want to show so your popcorns? So these are what the popcorn, we call it, they're popcorns because that's what everybody calls them. But that's what she calls them. Yeah. So, the yeah. popcorn flowers. So the popcorn is actually one of the stitches that you that do. You and you just do it all the way around a ring. And we d I discovered something very interesting because I was doing my, my chain to start and I was crocheting in the string, like the, the end, in end and as weaving you in the end as yeah. I went with one, one string. So that was okay, it worked fine. They turn out exactly like this. So most of mine are like this. Yeah. Then I thought, well, why am I sewing in any ends? So every time I had an end, I was, uh, I gathered them up together for a couple of the popcorns and I couldn't believe it doesn't, it doesn't look the same. No, no, no. Because the ends are so thick in here, it actually stretches out the center and it makes the, the flower bigger Different sizes. and a little bit kind of wonky it looks it's you can't get it to lay flat no no so i don't know if you can see this but you can see right through the center like around the the center as yeah. compared to this one which is tight and size wise they're actually quite different so what she's getting you to look at not the not the like center hole that is open yeah. on all of them but the next layer up here there's space around looks between lacy. the two colors yes yeah. And I'll take a picture closer up. Sure. But so now they're quite a bit bigger. However, I think having progressed to the next step that it's going to be okay with yeah. what we have to do next. And we figured out a way for us to adjust um, yes. doing that. So now I'm not doing yeah, that. I still do that. the one, the one, the first one. Yes. That's when you make your chain. The single strand doesn't seem to cause. No, doesn't difference. cause any trouble. Yeah. But the, when you put four of them in there. It made, it made a difference. Imagine that. You, of all people, who knows all about plies of yarn and <laughs> yeah. what a big difference it makes. Well, I never really thought that it would be like that much. But because you, you went from a two-ply yarn to what, a six-ply yarn? It would be eight. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so that's it. So I only did two of these. And when I put them down, I was like, oh boy. Okay. So I have two big ones. And uh, depending how quick I go, I, these may be just, oh, maybe I'll make one of those little hair things like what you had oh, in what your I had hair the, the other, other day. day. I just I'm, took bobby pins and yeah. stuck it in my hair. So I don't, uh, I don't think it'll make a big difference when it's in the blanket. So, but if, if I have time and the inclination, I'll just redo them. And Where Kim imagines she's just going to get some extra time, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's that. Yeah. So, so that's that, that step. Yes. And then the next step is you start to put it together. And I didn't weave in any ends. That's all right, actually, that's I've discovered yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, so um, so you start with this center, hexy. Yeah. That's what they're calling the hexes. I think it's, just, it's a hexagon. A hexagon, Six yes. And then you start pieces. working out from either side of that and you mirror, yeah. mirror the sides. So you have your popcorn that's in the middle, like this, okay. and then you crochet around to give you a little bit of a border yeah. and then you crochet them together yeah. so and she's very good at she gives very distinct um or very clear instructions on how to do all of that i had never joined granny squares or anything with <laughs> crochet and her explanations are fantastic yes they yeah. really are yeah so that's how mine look, and I was completely surprised at how the colors turned out. I think they're gorgeous. Well, I like them, but it's not at all what I thought what it was going to look like. And that's what I'm finding with this that's so fun. It's like doing a bit of a mystery, mystery yes. knit yes. with still knowing what you're aiming for at the right. end. Right, right. Because the way that these colors all melded together, they, didn't, they looked like very distinct colors when yeah. obviously they're distinct. But the way that they kind of just melt into each other, it really reminded me, I think I said to you, like a, a Marie Wallen colorwork. Yeah, Marie color Wallen work. inspired colorwork. Yeah. yeah, and it's the felted tweed. Which I, I'm really loving the felted tweed look for this. Yes. It's what yeah. Sue used to design it. And yeah. 
I'm usually someone who is always trying yarn replacements, but in this case, I'm mm -hmm. really loving the tweed with it. And it's, uh, when we were doing the color theory, Sue often said to people, it, it'll work. Just trust it. It'll work. Trust it'll work. Process. But I think yeah. it's, it works partly because of the theory that we learned, but also partly because the felted tweed, tweed works yeah. because you've got the, the muted flex in there. Okay. Like it's, every color holds a little tiny relation to another color. Yes, that's so right. Yeah. So that's so it. So that's that one. So yeah. that's as far as I got, which was the lessons from last week. So by last week, these garlands should have been done. All done. Yes, <laughs> but I'll be catching up on Zoom week. Okay, sounds good. Betsy kept to the timeline. So yes. she's taken so over from here. We've got, so the idea I'll is... I'll help you hold it up because yours is so big. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the one piece that she was holding should be this size here. Yeah. So this is the center one right where Kim's hand is. And then you've got three that go out from there. Yeah. So you actually want to complete two of these as this is going to, I, and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to attach and come together, but it will at some point yes. come together. So you have the one. So this then, is like yeah. the center one. And yours, uh, yours, I guess they look about the same size. Yours are a little bit bigger, I think. A tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, I think we decided you're you're just crocheting a little tighter. I yeah. think. And that just yeah. I think that just has to do with the number of crochet stitches yes. I've done in my life versus yeah. what you but have. But you're uh, it's interesting because your um, your centers of your flowers don't have the mine have little holes in them. That I know I don't know I'm not sure I have to well if you pull mine I think oh you yeah get, so Maybe I mean, it's, it's funny. I'm tighter in some areas yeah. and Kim is tighter in others. So Because your my, popcorns were tighter than my, mine. Oh yes, my actual, like each little leaf of my popcorn was definitely tighter and yeah. mine actually curled in on themselves into the back, which right. I think we talked about right. last time. Which didn't affect anything. It has not because no. you actually end up attaching into the back and yeah. that, then the hexagon smooths that out for And you. just to, I'll get you to hold sure. yours and I'll hold mine up just because if you recall, we talked about this the last time. The original pattern goes from light or from right. Yeah, so you go, you go, you use the light on the top of the gar garlands on the original pattern, which I'm following. And Betsy decided to use the, the dark, dark, and she's yeah. going to go dark to light so to the outside. So your blanket, as it grows out, the background will go from light to dark. Yes. So you're, you'll, you'll have like a dark border around yours. Right. But mine will get lighter, and it'll be yeah. the lightest color yes. on the border. on the border. Yeah. So that also gives a bit of a, a different look. And then so, she this takes week's lesson <laughs> to the next step, which is to make these larger flowers that you have here. Um, I think still same number of petals we were still working within. So yeah. um, still a nice circle, but just a little it's bit. It's a five popcorn instead of a four popcorn. Right. That's yeah. that's a bit of the difference there. Yeah. So you go, that's the size comparison. When I was watching people take pictures of them, I had no context as to what they were. So right. those are my hands and those are the different sizes. Right. And then what these are used for is to fill in those holes. Yeah. And again, we just got that information today this, this morning <laughs> so my poor dogs are at home <laughs> suffering because their walk was cut a little short so that I could get these in but don't worry they have their food their water and they did get fresh air today <laughs> and I'll walk them again when I get home yeah. so yeah you fill nice. in the center yeah, there it's beautiful and you want to remind everybody what your your inspiration I'm going for was. the Monet's water lilies yes and I am super pleased so far yes it looks so yeah it looks really like it. I'm enjoying it yeah okay so that's it so you're yeah. um I don't know what you're gonna do next week when the zoom meetings are on but I'll be busy <laughs> maybe I'll actually remember to attend the one that I sign up for oh okay oh, right. <laughs> last time I got home and just completely missed it yeah so I do not yeah. want to do that this time yeah yeah all right. So I think that's it. Yeah. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you. Okay. So we'll see you in a couple weeks. Sounds well, good. Well, I'll see her before that. But <laughs> we'll see you in a couple of yes, weeks. Yes, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that's it. And uh, thank you, Betsy, for uh, reminding me of how old I am. <laughs> so anyway, that's funny. I really don't care. I'm not I'm not too uh, worried about my age so uh it's it's fine so I'm I'm it was funny
So, but it is something to think that she was learning to walk while I was going downtown partying in Halifax. <laughs> so, and it's funny about, um, I'm actually, my birthday comes up in July and I'm going to be, uh, how old am I going to be? 57. 57. I can't believe it. I don't feel 57, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, I told this story, I think before that my grandmother was still living in her, in her home when she was, uh, 90, I think she had turned 93 or something like that. And I asked her, I said, how, how does it feel to be 93? And she said, you know what? She said, honestly, I pass myself in a mirror and catch a glimpse of myself in a mirror and I can't believe that that old woman is me. She said, I don't feel like that. She said, I have to, I have to look twice sometimes because inside she still felt like she was, she was a younger woman. And I, I feel, most days I feel like that. Some days I don't, <laughs> sometimes I feel 80, but, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is true. Time goes by fast, but I don't know if you're in pretty good shape, like as far as physically and, and so forth, it's, uh, it is hard. I I still think that when we talk about things about the eighties and the nineties, that it was just like 10 years ago or so. And then I get reminded that it's no, the eighties were actually 40 years ago. <laughs> so, anyway, that's, uh, I'm sure there's a few of, of us in this group of uh, the Fleece and Harmony watchers that uh, are all feeling the same way. So thank you, Betsy, for, uh, for joining me again with that. It was, it was great. It's always a pleasure to do that segment. So we're going to talk about the Fiber Festival for a few minutes. So there's not much to say because the tickets are selling. Everything's up on the website. Uh, the classes are selling out. So if there's classes that you really want, you should probably look at it if you haven't already looked at them yet. And, uh, but we are also keeping waiting lists for some of the classes that have already been sold out. So you can put your name on the waiting list. And if, uh, if the class becomes available, we will reach out to you. But I've been getting a couple uh, messages about the hotel situation. So the Delta, um, our block of rooms has all been booked. So there's not any rooms left in the, the block that we had for the Fiber Festival. And the rooms that are left at the hotel right now are pretty expensive uh, for most budgets. So I'm not sure if, if you are really uh, want to be in uh, the lap of luxury, then you can, you can book them. But for a lot of bu people's budgets, they're, they're a little bit out of reach at this point because it's just those hotel, those expensive rooms that are left but there are three other hotels on the list. So if you go on the Fiber Festival website, there is a link to the hotels and the Great George is one, which is beautiful. Um, there, it's a percentage off the rate that's available for the room. So it's not a block of rooms per se, it's a, it's a discount off of the, the regular rates of the rooms. Um, there's the Holman Grand, so that is a block, I believe, with a with a discounted rate. And there is also the hotel hotel on Ponnell. And all of those hotels are literally a five minute wa walk or less to the Delta. So if you have to book a hotel room outside of the Delta, don't worry, it's really, really close. Charlottetown is a city, but it's a really small city. And the downtown is a pretty concentrated core. So you're only a block or two away from the uh, the hotel where the event is going to happen. So you don't worry about that. If you still can't find what you want, there is a 1-800 number uh, for Tourism PEI, which I will put in the show notes. And they just give excellent service if you call that number. They know uh, they're really keeping their fingers on the pulse of what rooms are available. They have a lot of information about the availability and the rates that room, hotel rooms are going for or places to stay. So I would suggest if you're really stuck and you can't find what you want, that you give them a call and they're more than happy to help you uh, find a place to stay. So you can check that out. Like I said, I'll put the number in the show notes uh, of the podcast so you'll be able to find, phone them directly for accommodations. And finally, we're to the harmony part. So thank you all for your comments. And Ken thanks you for all of the uh, thumbs up that we got on the harmony part. Uh, it really was beautiful. I watched it myself about six times. So I don't usually do that, but I really liked it too. 
And so this time Ken takes us to a pebble beach, which is literally down the road from us, kind of so, sort of on the same road that we live on, uh, but at another, an opposite end. And um, this is uh, the Halliday Road. And so our Garfield Road, where we live, turns into Halliday Road at, when you cross the highway and uh, you go down towards the water and Ken took a little walk down there so that we could all experience it. It's a, not a sandy beach, it's a pebble beach and um, it's not, you can get right down to the water but it's a, it's a little bit like a rocky shore but you get a really good view of a lot of the um, red cliffs that we have that go down to the shore in PEI. It was a very calm day, which is not usual here on PEI. So there's not any real action. I'm just uh, gonna find a beautiful uh, piece of music to put behind it and you can just relax for about three minutes and enjoy a little walk on the beach at the end of Halliday Road. So we'll see you in two weeks. As always, I hope that you have a beautiful two weeks filled with the crafts that you love and color and joy. And we'll see you back here, I guess that would be on June 24th. So have a great two weeks, everybody, and enjoy the beach. Bye.